Howdy y'all, thank you for being here. Today we're going to have a little video about castles. More specifically, in the second part of this video, we're going to be looking at the Neuswanstein Castle in Bavaria, Germany. But first, I just want to give you a brief intro into the history of castles in Europe, especially of the oldest castles in Europe, those that don't really have a defined history, or the history is a little bit more questionable than others. So let's just touch upon this really quick. I also have some amazing photographs to accompany this narrative. So let's just get right into it. I have previously, at the start of my old world research, touched upon the relentlessly mocking history of many of the castles in Europe. Now, back then my aim, so to speak, wasn't the best and the overall result of the video was not my favorite. That was a video from one and a half, maybe two years ago. But today I'd like to briefly touch on that topic again with a more accurate account of what I believe we're seeing in most of these questionable old world narratives. In many areas, especially in Europe, castles are the basis for the name of that specific area or region. And it's not vice versa, meaning the castle appears to come first in the history books before the actual naming of the area. And in the timeline of the narrative, these castles predate the known recorded history of the area that surrounds them. The names of many different towns and even countries, including Luxembourg, have been derived from the ancient names of the castles which were founded in those areas. What's more revealing for me is that in most cases, historians cannot agree upon or simply do not know who actually constructed the first castle in many of these areas. Most of the time, in these questionable narratives, we are given a date, for example, built before the year 1200, but no exact person who did the construction is given, and no exact date of the construction is ever given. However, in nearly all of these narratives, we are told that years later, certain kingdoms would come in and basically take over these castles and then rebuild the castles. Many of the time, these kingdoms would be incorporated into the Holy Roman Empire, and the castle was rebuilt under the guise of the Holy Roman Empire. Yet, we're never really told in any history books who actually built the first structure, who actually built this first fortification, who built these foundations, let alone who named these castles and how that name was basically taken from the castle and given to the surrounding area. Let me try and put this in layman's terms, and then I'll provide you with an example or two of which there really are hundreds. Essentially, we have many of these hillside castles said to be built before the year 1200, and they are literally being founded all throughout Europe. Now, when I say founded, I literally mean people are coming upon these castles and they are finding them. Again, this is not every castle in history or even close to it. It's just there are a cluster of ancient castles which have eerily similar histories that basically tell us that certain groups of people migrated to the area not knowing anything would be there and they basically founded these massive castles that were already there and they were basically in ruins and unoccupied. In some cases the people who would find these castles who would inherit these castles would name the castle after themselves but other times the people who came upon these castles really had no history and they would actually take the name of the castle as their own. Which also leads to another question really, the chicken or the egg? Because we're told that these castles were sitting here unoccupied, yet some of the castles still had names and some of the people who took over or inherited these castles would end up taking the name of the castle as their own. For example, the Hohenzollern family, who I've made a video about previously. It's all very interesting. Now, we're told again, many of these castles were usually credited as being built between 800 and 1200. However, they could easily predate that number. Now, from the year 1200 forward, we really have these castles that are being incorporated into different kingdoms all throughout Europe. Most of the time, these kingdoms would end up being part of the Holy Roman Empire. And with these entitlements and with this new ownership, so to speak, of the kingdom would come a rebuild of the castle. 
Now, it wasn't always under the control of the Holy Roman Empire. There are other parts of the world where we also have castles being rebuilt. But most of the time, the castles that we see nowadays are many different rebuilds later from the original structure that once stood here. And I find that to be absolutely fascinating because most of the time, when we're looking at history from before the year 1000, we can find that it becomes very convoluted and even the deepest historians cannot agree upon where these castles came from. Again, this is not every single castle or even close to it, but this is a large number of castles that have this similar narrative where we cannot exactly pinpoint when and who built the castle. All we know is that later groups came in and quote unquote rebuilt the castle in their own image and rewrote the history. So that's what I find really fascinating about the castles of the old world. We can always ask ourselves who really rebuilt this castle? How old is the first castle structure and who named the castle let alone the surrounding area? So, for example, we have this Roman area with so much history known as Tyrol, or the Tyrol, Italian Tyrolo. And this is a historic region in the Alps, in parts of Italy and modern-day Austria. Tyrol was part of the Holy Roman Empire from the formation of Tyrol in the 1100s up until World War I. The narrative also says that the modern region of Tyrol was the ancient center of the county of Tyrol, which was formed in the year 1140. Now, since 1140, the county of Tyrol was a holy Roman estate which housed the counts of Tyrol. So naturally, I was interested in finding out more about the counts of Tyrol. Essentially, what we're told, and I put this as simply as possible, is the counts of Tyrol are those people who moved into Tyrol Castle after it was founded. According to the current narrative, Tyrol Castle and the mound on which it was built have been occupied since the earliest Christian period, with confirmed remains from the 5th century being found within excavations. The Tyrol Castle, according to this official narrative, was built by these earliest occupants sometime before the year 1100 and that is all that we are told we do not have an exact group of people that built the original structure here we do not have an exact date that's given besides that it was sometime before the year 1100 roughly 600 years before that we have occupation of this mound and we have construction that could date back to that period or even further the name to roll itself was the name of the castle which those who moved in basically took and then from there the county was named after them and so on and so forth but we don't have really any history of the Tyrol castle before it was discovered by a group of people so realistically we have history like that not only in Tyrol we have it in Hohenzollern and we have it in countless castle histories all around the world Realistically, we have castles that appear to come out of nowhere and different groups of people basically come upon them, take over these castles as their own, and take different concepts found within the castle, including the name, as their own. It is absolutely fascinating, and that's what I wanted to talk about today in this intro video to the oldest castles of the world. Something else that I feel is important to mention here is the dichotomy that's created between the different castles that are found on the mountainsides throughout Europe as opposed to the different Roman cities that are found all throughout Europe as well. Now, the Roman cities are always really symmetrical, they're always flat, they are always paved, and they always have these really interesting designs. Now, I've heard others mention and I've mentioned in old world videos that I've made about the possible power grid of the world, the power grid of the landscape. And it's interesting to notice that we have these really flat Romanesque cities and Romanesque fortifications that are built. And then nearby on the mountainsides and on the hillsides, we have these absolutely tall and massive stone masonry built towers and castles. And I think it's really interesting. Now, 
I've heard mentioned before that possibly these could be in unison with one another, but I also pose the question, what if the Romans were actually just a mere portion of the larger group of people? And what if these fortifications actually went hand in hand with dealing with the cataclysm, whatever that may be? Now, I'm not saying that these are parts of a larger superstructure, although that would be very interesting, that would be very telling. Books can only rely on the science that we have. So the real cataclysm would have to be the mini ice age that we had really in the late end of the Middle Ages. But what I think it could be and what it really appears to be here is some sort of earth that was moved. Now, I'm not exactly sure how, but when we look at these castles, especially the castles that have really convoluted histories, histories that don't make a lot of sense or histories that sort of end in a dead end, those castles appear to be the most buried or the most in ruins of all the castles found around the world. And I think that's very revealing to the nature of when they were constructed and what exactly they went through. Now, getting back into castles, no matter how you look at it, however the owners of these castles were lost, we do have literally hundreds of these castles that turned into cities and turned into towns that really got their name and got their history from the history of the castle. The castle was founded on this land and from there people moved in. People surrounded the ancient castle and made it a part of history. And that is really where the history of a lot of these castles begins. But before that, we're not sure really where these fortifications came from. And that's what I want to allude to today in this video. I just want to present that idea to you. So if you ever see a castle, if you ever see an ancient structure, if you ever see something that really intrigues your mind and you want to learn more about it, I would definitely recommend going for it. Because I believe within at least 75% of the narratives of these ancient structures, you'll come to find that the castle was rebuilt, the castle was torn down, it was demolished, it changed ownership. There's always something within the narrative that points to a little more being there right below the surface. And I think it's worth diving in and trying to find out more about these things. So before I get to the second part of this video where we're going to talk about the Neuschwanstein castle in Bavaria, Germany, I first would like to hear your thoughts and your comments down below, especially in regards to these oldest castles of Europe whose histories really lead to a dead end. And by that I mean when we look into the history, we are essentially told that a group of people came upon the castle. A group of people essentially founded the castle or founded the fortifications, founded these foundations and they moved in or the town or the city basically grew around the castle. So much so that the name of the castle was actually taken to be the name of the town, to be the name of the city, almost in a sort of chicken or egg, which came first. Well, in this case, it appears that the egg came first or the castle came first because we're told that groups of people basically came upon these castles and they did not know the history of the castle or they did not engage with those people who built the castle to the point that they did not know the history of the castle. They basically took the castle, they took the name of it, and they took that as their own and they began to represent the castle themselves. But the earliest history, the real true history, where these foundations came from and these earliest castles came from is still unknown. And I find that to be absolutely fascinating because some of the largest cities in Europe and really around the world are built on the foundations of these ancient castles. And I always wondered how more people were not inspired to find out more about the history of these castles, seeing as it's still really unknown today, at least according to the current narrative. We have a slew of different castle foundations that were all created before the year 1200 that were found by all different groups of people. And those groups of people would basically take the castle, take the castle's name as their own, and basically rewrite the history in their own image. And that is something we see repeatedly throughout European history. 
So that is all I wanted to talk about in part one of this video. That's really all I wanted to cover. Just an intro into the ancient castles, especially the oldest castles, and just show you how they relate to the different ancient earthworks and construction that we find all throughout the world. Now, in the case of Europe, we have castles that are built on earth mounds or built on hills. And essentially, we have rebuild after rebuild. And for the most part, when one rebuild happens, the history before that rebuild is essentially erased. Now, when we look at North America and other parts of the quote unquote new world, we have a very similar history where we have earth mounds and things like that that are said to be built by native or indigenous people. Yet we have different cities that are constructed right on top of the ruins of those earthworks. Then when we look at old world photographs and we see these deep layers of construction, we ask ourselves, how old is the construction? Is this old world or is this even older than old world and dates back to the times of the earliest indigenous inhabitants? And what we come to find is really it's always open for debate. So that's what I wanted to say essentially in this castle video is that castles are beautiful. They're magnificent but they also have a history that is absolutely convoluted. It's always worth questioning, especially in the case of a castle where we don't necessarily know who built the first rendition of this castle. All we know is that subsequent years later, the castle was built on top of, remodeled, repurposed, built again. And this is something we see over and over again in different narratives of castles all throughout the world. So that's just what I wanna point out here is that while we know a lot about these castles, all we really can do is look at these amazing photographs, dive into the narrative, and try and point out all the anomalies that we see. Because essentially, what we have here is a very confusing, very convoluted history that points to these castles predating human occupation of these areas. So, absolutely fascinating. Now we're going to talk about a little castle in Bavaria, so join me for part two. I hope to see you there.